A worthy woman from beside Bath City was with us, somewhat deaf, which was a pity. In making cloth, she showed so great a bent, she bettered those of Ypres and of Ghent. In all the parish, not a dame dared stir towards the altar steps in front of her, and if indeed they did, so wrath was she as to be quite put out of charity. Her kerchiefs were of finely woven ground. I dared have sworn they weighed a good ten pound, the ones she wore on Sunday, on her head. Her hose were of the finest scarlet red and gartered tight. Her shoes were soft and new. Bold was her face, handsome and red in hue. A worthy woman all her life. What's more, she'd had five husbands, all at the church door. Apart from other company in youth. No need just now to speak of that, forsooth. And she had thrice been to Jerusalem, seen many strange rivers and passed over them. She'd been to Rome and also to Boulogne, St. James of Compostella and Cologne, and she was skilled in wandering by the way. She had gap teeth, set widely, truth to say. Easily on an ambling horse she sat, well wimpled up, and on her head a hat as broad as is a buckler or a shield. She had a flowing mantle that concealed large hips. Her heels spurred sharply under that. In company she liked to laugh and chat, and knew the remedies for love's mischances, an art in which she knew the oldest dances. A holy-minded man of good renown there was, and poor, the parson to a town, Yet he was rich in holy thought and work. He also was a learned man, a clerk, who truly knew Christ's gospel and would preach it devoutly to parishioners and teach it. Benign and wonderfully diligent, and patient when adversity was sent, for so he proved in much adversity, he hated cursing to extort a fee. Nay, rather, he preferred beyond a doubt giving to poor parishioners round about, both from church offerings and his property. He could in little find sufficiency. Wide was his parish, with houses far asunder, yet he neglected not, in rain or thunder, in sickness or in grief, to pay a call on the remotest, whether great or small, upon his feet. And in his hand a stave. This noble example to his sheep he gave, that first he wrought, and afterwards he taught. And it was from the gospel he had caught those words, and he would add this figure too, that if gold rust, what then will iron do? For if a priest be foul in whom we trust, no wonder that a common man should rust. And shame it is to see, let priests take stock, a shittern shepherd and a snowy flock. The true example that a priest should give is one of cleanness, how the sheep should live. He did not set his benefice to hire and leave his sheep encumbered in the mire or run to London to earn easy bread by singing masses for the wealthy dead or find some brotherhood and get enrolled. He stayed at home and watched over his fold so that no wolf should make the sheep miscarry. He was a shepherd and no mercenary. Holy and virtuous he was, but then never contemptuous of sinful men, never disdainful, never too proud or fine, but was discreet in teaching and benign. His business was to show a fair behaviour, and draw men thus to heaven and their saviour. Unless indeed a man were obstinate, and such, whether of high or low estate, he put to sharp rebuke, to say the least. I think there never was a better priest. He sought no pomp or glory in his dealings, no scrupulosity had spiced his feelings. Christ and his twelve apostles and their law he taught, but followed it himself before. 